All right, hope everybody's having a really good day. Still super excited about this personal turnaround series. Just really excited about just, just everything that I've been hearing, the, the comments, the, the feedback, the people that have been messages from the, the Facebook Lives and also the, the YouTube channel for the different people that have been watching and, and sharing and just excited about giving these 12 keys of personal turnaround. You know, that there's so many different aspects to, to living a life that's successful and with God and successful in what God has called you to. And so just honored that you would spend this time with me. And man, I tell you, I got some notes today. Now, tomorrow is going to be our last day in this series, but I'm going to continue to be on our Facebook ministry page every morning at 830 in the morning and releasing one to two videos a day on our YouTube. So just want to thank everybody for, for being on here with us and let's jump in this today. What I want to talk to you about is character. Character is one of the most important things you will ever have in your life. Proverbs 22 and 1, it says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. And that is so true and that is so powerful. We have so many people in the body of Christ that are so gifted, talented, with amazing abilities. But the problem is they do not have character. People ask me all the time, would you rather have somebody highly gifted or, or, or somebody with, with a lot of character? I said, well, I prefer if you could put the two together. But character is one of the most important things. John Maxwell, he always says this, if you can be anything in this world, be counted on. Be somebody who people can count on in life. Uh, I got, I've got so many notes that I just want to read you today. Um, I... As a leader, my main desire personally is to help everybody be successful in life. And, and my wife and I, we have a church in Texarkana, Aurora Church, Texarkana. We have an apostolic network, which is more like a family. But when people come in, they always want to tell me when I first meet them, they want to talk about gifts, talents, and abilities, and this and that. And I say, hey, all of that is great. But if you don't have godly character, you won't be running with us long because what you're going to find out in the very center of our Christ-centered DNA are people full of character and integrity that value God, the power and presence of God, and they value character. You know, when people, it's so funny to watch new people come into our apostolic gatherings and our, our family gatherings, and they come in and, and they want to talk about this and they want to talk about it. And the people in our network aren't moved by any of that. What they, what they love to see is people full of character, integrity, that are moving forward in the things of God. They value their relationship with God, their marriage, their their, their, their parenting abilities, their grandparenting abilities, that they value family, they, that they want people to be real and authentic. And that is what character is. You know, true character is who you are when nobody else is around. When nobody else is around, your true character, the real you will always manifest. So you know you better than anybody else. You know, you know, and people a lot of times know your gifts, your talents and abilities, but you are the only one that really knows your, your biggest weaknesses, your frailties. And so I tell people all the time when, when they ask me to disciple them, I say, look, man, I'm not interested in your gifts and your talents, okay? I'm interested in your two or three biggest weaknesses because your, if I deal with your two or three biggest weaknesses in your life and we can remove those, then you will be able to, to flourish more in your gifts. That there's, there's people that call me all, all the time. Hey, can I come preach for your network? Can I come preach at your church? Man, they've got the gifts and the abilities that would probably bless the people. But here is the problem. When somebody comes into our church or ministry, people start following them. And when they start following them, then they will see over the next few months their character. I know in the past two years, there's been about three people uh, that I'm talking about here. Of course, I would never say their name, but they, they would call me and say, Hey, Apostle Jojo, man, we want to come preach for you. We want to come and minister. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, No, don't let them. 
every time one of those people messaged me, within the next 90 days, they had something happen in their life. They did not have anybody speaking into their life. Therefore, their character was not intact and they had a mess up and it basically destroyed their ministry at that time. We pray that they're restored. But all three of them just completely shipwrecked. Now, if I would have had them come in and they stood on our platform and ministered, everybody that, that follows us would have probably started following them on social media. But then what would have happened is they would have saw what they went through and they might have even jumped on the train with them and then there was a train wreck. That is why you have to learn to value character. Your gifts will get you to a place in life, but it is your character that will keep you there. I tell people this all the time. You know, your gift will get you on the, a platform, but, but it is your character that will keep you there. For the lack of character, you will end up falling off the platform. And it happens all the time. When people start running with my wife and I, what they will do is they will start running. And a lot of times people can run with us for a certain amount of time, an allotted amount of time. And then this is how I, I deal with things. A lot of times somebody, they'll have a character flaw. And I will say, Holy Spirit, if they need to exit right now, let them exit. Because when I was younger and not quite as mature, I would always go in and try to be like Holy Spirit and say, hey, I see you got this area and this area and this area of your life and I'm calling you out on it. Well, it would leave a wound. But when Holy Spirit can come in, Holy Spirit can have people exit. So all the time the people will come in and in a time frame people will go and a lot of times when people leave they they run their mouth a little bit but you know what it shows the lack of their character don't ever stoop to that level you just say you know what my character will speak louder than any word that will ever come out of my mouth and, and so that happens a lot of time in businesses i remember you know, I would talk to different people that would be transferring from one business place to the next. And they would tell me how bad their last business was. And this one guy in particular came to me and said, you know, I worked for this one company for two years. And he was talking bad about him. I said, excuse me, but they paid you a paycheck for two years for what you did. I would sing their praises. I wouldn't talk bad about them. There's no perfect business. There's sure no perfect church because there's no perfect people. The Bible says there's nobody perfect. No, not one. So if people are running churches and ministries, they're not going to be perfect. There's going to be um, a, a lack of character in everybody. That's why we're always working on our character. And so I told that guy, you need to transfer from one place to the next. Well, the way you leave one season is how you will enter into your next season. A leader's gift is only as safe as the character that surrounds their gift. When, when God gives you a gift, you need to make sure that you put character all around that gift. You, you know, when, when I was young, my grandfather used to come over to my house and, and we would till up the ground and we would always plant. And for some reason, I love tomato plants, probably because I love tomatoes. But he would always put those big metal garter rails around. I said, why are you putting that around the plant? He said, to keep some things out because the seed we have is a valuable seed. So when you put that in the ground, it is guarding that you've got to put character around your gift. The biggest flaw people have is they think that their gift is so big that they don't have to have character. You know, people all the time, they, they say, how do you judge as if you're successful? I say, well, I really don't. But if I did, I would see the five or six people closest to me. And if I could tell that I have people full of character around me, the main leaders we have around me, running with me, it shows that I have character. You, you, you see a lot of people in the world, they don't care about character. You know, that they just run to and fro and, and, and they don't care. But what you do in your life, you need to be a person full of character. Proverbs 11 and 3, it says, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will always destroy them. I do not want to be a flash in the pan in life, business, ministry, marriage, parenting, none of that. I want to be faithful in all of my ways. I want to be faithful to what God has called me to do. John Maxwell says this, It's true that charisma can make a person stand out for a moment, but character sets a person apart for a lifetime. And that is so powerful. 
you, you, know, you know, like I said, I mean, your, your, your gifts, talents, and abilities can be flashy, and somebody can see that. They'll want to hire that good salesman. They'll, they'll want to hire that person that's a good marketing agent for their marketing firm. They want to hire the person that is a good worship leader for their church. They want to hire a hotshot youth pastor. But I'm telling you, that's why you've got to know people's character. What about an amazing school teacher? You know, the, the, the school that my kids go to, they really value the character of their teachers. And that's why there's not a lot of turnover there. That's one reason I love where my kids go to school. And, and character is something that has to be valued. You know, listen, your character determines the length of your stay in a lot of places. There's been so many times in, I've been in ministry for almost 25 years, I've seen people come into a church and they want to find their spot in leadership and they want to find their place and they want to do this and do that. But all of a sudden, the first time their character has a flaw in it and leadership comes to them, if they think their gift is so big, they'll just, they'll just bounce off of the leadership and go do whatever. They'll say whatever and they'll walk away, but there's a deep character flaw inside of them. And, and I remember one day, this new family came into the church that I was working at when I was a youth pastor and the mom and the dad came in with their two daughters and they were bad mouthing the last church and I said oh that sounds like a bad church how long were you there they said 10 months I said okay how long were you at the church before that they said 11 months I said well how long were you at the church before that they said nine months I had a prophetic word of the Lord they were going to stay with us about 10 to 12 months well 12 months later they were mad at us and left four churches little less than four years, but, but every time they would do something and leadership would come to them, they would just get mad. And it was always everybody else's fault. And you know, there are people, there are people like that in life that are 50 and 60 and 70 years old, still blaming everybody. People of true character, you will hardly ever find them blame anybody. You know, when God has called you to be in charge of your destiny, your, your one-on-one -on -one intimate walk with God, with the Holy Spirit is guiding you and leading you. you. You never blame anybody else for your frailties or anything. In today's society, people really don't forgive a lot of people when they make a huge mistake, but they always hold their past failures over their heads. Make it hard for anybody to ever find dirt on you. If they want to talk about you, they're going to have to make up lies about you. I remember one day somebody called me and said, hey man, I got to tell you about a mutual friend that we have. And they started throwing dirt on them. And I said, first of all, shut your mouth. Second of all, that man's character speaks louder than the accusations you have. I call out insecurity inside of you and not my dear friend that you're talking about. They're like, dude, I can't believe you just said that. I said, well, you better recognize the guy that you were talking about is a close ministry friend of mine, and I've never seen him lack character in his life. He's always been a man of character and integrity. Now, the person who called me six months later, completely out of ministry because there was something inside of him that he didn't deal with. Romans 12 and 2 in the Passion Translation, it says, stop um, imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture that you know, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of the way that you think. Man, that is powerful. And, and then it goes on to say, this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. I want my life to be satisfying to the Lord. Proverbs 10 and 9, it says, whoever walks in integrity will walk securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. That's a, that's a word right there from the Lord. People that lack character, their life will be found out because of the way that they walk. Character, this is by Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe. Character is the foundation of all aspects of effective leadership. My friends, if you do not have character, you will not stand. Now, I know a lot of people of great character who have went to work for a business that paid them good, had good benefits, and as they got deeper and deeper into the business, they would call me and say, Apostle, pray for me. This business really doesn't have character. And I said, well, one of two things is going to happen. You are going to be able to change them because of your character, and just to let you know, they will ask you to do something shady. Let your character stand forth. 
And, and you know, nine times out of 10, unfortunately, those people are removed, but they left their mark on that company because of their character. True character is who you are when no one else is around. When no one else is around you, what type of character do you have? You know, I ask people, when no one's around you, what type of music do you listen to? What are you watching? What are you doing on your computer? What are you doing on, on your phone? How much time do you really pray? I remember I was at a, a conference one time, and, and, and they were waving flags, a lot like flags were going out of style. This was the last thing you could wave a flag in all of eternity. And, and I was asking these people, and these people were worshiping the Lord exuberantly and just going for it. And, and, and I said, hey, that's great and all, but do you worship like that at home? Do, do you dance like that before the Lord at home or just in public? And they were like, you know, one lady said, just in, in, in public. And the other person said, oh, I get real wild at the house. I said, wave your flag, girl. Wave your flag because this is how you are naturally. This is who you are. But the other people, when I started talking to them, they said, well, we're kind of doing it for show and to get attention. And I said, there's a lack of character in this. You should worship more wildly in your own private place of, of prayer. A leader full of character changes the room when he or she walks in it. When you walk in, I had a gentleman tell me one time, he said, when you walked in the room, Joe, your gifts and your character aligned together and spoke loudly. In fact, they were louder than your message. And if you ever heard me preach, you know I'm loud. They said, your gifts and your character combined and spoke louder than the message that you even preached. And, and you know, that's one of the biggest you know, accolades you, you could get. Another thing, listen to this, this is so good. The devil isn't in a hurry to get you. He wants to wait a little bit, actually, until you have influence. And the more influence you have, the harder he's coming after you. This is why you must work on your character every single day. I've seen so many people in ministry. The reason I, I refer to ministry a lot because that's, that's what I do and that's what I'm in, in, ingrained and engulfed in the majority of my, my day. But I've seen so many people start rising in ministry, but what happened is they were rising in ministry is, is they forgot to work on their character. They forgot to work on their character. So as the, their, their gift would increase, their character would increase, but then all of a sudden their gift would increase their character would listen a little bit, then their gift would increase, but their character wouldn't. So what God will do is he will bring your anointing down to where your character will, will match. Your character and the anointing of God on your gift have got, actually your character needs to be at a higher level. Listen, you win the battles of life in private. You actually see the manifestation of the win in public. You know, you, you, win, you win the things in the private place before you're actually, de it's determined your victory. I've heard boxers say, you win your, your, the, the boxing match actually in your preparation. You know, so you've got to be able to, to understand that. You've got to be able, I tell my little, my, my, my daughters, they're running track this year and they're both really good. And I told them, I said, you don't win during the track meet. You, you, you win during the week. When you come home, practice some more. Get in the right shape. Eat the right foods. Get ready. And because you have character even in your sport. John Maxwell says this, character creates consistency. And if your people, if you're a leader in ministry or business, if your people know what they can expect from you, they will continue to look to you for leadership. They'll look to you for leadership. Dr. Miles Monroe says this. It says, we, leave, we lead out of our belief system. What do you stand for in life? What do you stand for? You know, people, if they look at you, if you are a leader, if, if they're looking to you, they better know your core values. They better see your core values and know what you stand for. Listen, people are not impressed by your gifts, your talents, and abilities. If they are, they are shallow. They need to be impressed by your character and your integrity. Your belief systems are the standards and convictions in your life. You must, you must, we must all learn to stand for something in this life. You got to stand for something. Character is something that takes years to build but can be destroyed in a second. You know, I, I say this all the time, but, but I, 
you know, I, I have, a, have a, an amazing walk with the Lord, and that is the number one focus and priority of my day. I have an amazing relationship with my wife, my kids and I, we have a great relationship. You know, in ministry, everything we do, we have a great relationship with the majority of the people in our church, in our network and all that. I can lose everything, everything in a second. But my wife, my children, our church, our ministry, they don't deserve for me to, to act out of character. You know, you ever heard the old saying, oh my goodness, they were just acting out of character. Well, what is that? It is that there was something inside of them that they haven't completely allowed Holy Spirit to deal with, and it manifested in public. Somebody manifested on me recently, and I said, hey, you just manifested in public on me. I still love you, but here's what I want you to know. That was brought out for you to see and everybody around you to see. Now deal with that and get stronger in that so it never happens again. And, and there's been there's so many times in your life you will be tested in public and your true character will come out. Recently, mine was tested and um, I still have a tongue. I still have a bottom lip. I about bit them off though. Like somebody had said something and people went and looked at me in public and I was like, okay. And this, I was just smiling. It was hard, but I was smiling through it because the initial thought that came to my mind, my tongue was like, mm, actually, Holy Spirit was like holding, <laughs> I don't know what, but, but, but then I said, okay, what surfaced up for me to think about five years ago, I would have spouted it out. Um, but, but now I said, now I've got to work to where I don't even think like that anymore. You've always got to work on your character. Your hardest situations in your life will tell you what you actually need to work on. There you go, friends. Personal turnaround day number 11 is character. If I got to put a second word in there, I'll say integrity. I want to run with people full of character and integrity. And you know, if you're running with people and they do something a little bit out of character, you say, hey man, you know, that's out of your character. Your, your gift is, is above you doing that or saying that. And they'll say, why do you say that? And you explain it. There's been so many times I've done that to people. And people turn, and they'll turn and get stronger. But then also, I've seen so many people that will say, nah, whatever, man. That's just something little. And that be the very thing that destroyed them. The Bible says in Solomon, it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. So every day of your life, work on your character and watch what God will do. I remember years ago, I, I was on a, a traveling softball team. There was this one guy that played a certain position. This, this dude was lots out, amazing ball player, but he had a problem showing up on time and a few times he left us stranded. Well, there was another guy that played the same position wasn't wasn't quite as good, wasn't as good of a hitter, but he was always there. He would show up to practice, show up to the tournaments. He would pitch in, man. He was fun to be around. And you know what? We chose him over the other guy because the other guy was inconsistent. You know, people that have ministry, people that have businesses, they want reliable people on their team. We have some people in, in our ministry, Jeff and Michelle McFarland, you know what? I never question their character. I, I never question them. And, you know, well, actually, Michelle is our administrator. She works for us full time, and Jeff helps us with so much and, and does a lot of part time stuff for us. I never really worry about them, you know, because their character. You need people around you full of character, and you need to be a person full of character. It, I'm telling you what. When you have character in your life, you're not always looking over your shoulder, saying, oh, do I have to backtrack of anything I did or I said no. It is a lifestyle full of the Holy Spirit guiding you and leading you. I hope this video helped you and encouraged you today. Tomorrow's the last day in this series, and I'm going to be going over the Word of God, the Bible, and we're going to talk about how getting in the Word can help you have a personal turnaround.